Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So since last episode and during last episode in between some cuts and stuff, I have been very busy. Very, very busy. Um, when we left off of our tech work, if you recall, we had been working on some IC2 stuff. And if you recall, I had mentioned that we're going to be starting into reactors before too long, which is always fun. Of course, last time we did Enigmatica, we were a little bit more purist with our stuff. We didn't do any mechanism circuits or anything like that. This time around, we have done mechanism circuits. And it's actually made it a lot easier, a lot quicker um, to kind of push into IC2. A lot less material intensive, um, but this was a very material intensive project to get prepped up for because we do have a lot of stuff to set up but we're basically going to be pushing them in this episode and in possibly the next episode we're going to be pushing into uh, the remaining quests within IC2 now unfortunately I haven't really gotten these bred up yet <laughs> I've been busy with other stuff I'm gonna get back onto that um, but you can see right here I haven't gotten this room completely finished out a lot of it's gonna be dependent on where I end up placing all the machines and stuff um, but I have started building out this, and you can see I have built a reactor bay um, here. And these are self-resetting levers, uh, the 10 second ones, by the way, just from Ender IO. Um, and that way after 10 seconds, they'll automatically shut the door. So there's no accidental leaving it open or anything like that. And then of course we can run back over it. These are just frame pressure plates um, on the floor there. Now, in here, there's enough space laid out for four reactors. So, this, this isn't a reactor back here. This is just the bottom of that one, the side of this one, the side of that one, the side of that. Um, so, there's enough space here for four reactors. It's going to be a little bit before we set up four. It was a pain to prep for one. Um, because, of course, right now we are manually mining stuff. But after we get a quarry set up of some sort, whether that be through, you know, maybe Blood Magic or through Batania or through um, some kind of a tech mod or something, you know. Uh, once we get a quarry set up, it will make life a little bit easier for prepping for um, additional reactors. But over here, and I did set up some cobblestone generators, which really now that I think about it, I should probably change this up. I won't change it up right now. But long term, we'll probably set up additional uh, recyclers that are crafting scrap boxes. Because right now it's really just set up for just straight up scrap production. But that's fine. Um, but then over here, I did set up another macerator for us with the transformer upgrades. As well as an ore washing plant with an infinite water source. Uh, because we are going to need that today. And then over here, I have set up this. This is a... <laughs> this was a lot of work. This is a lot of prepped up things. Um, you can see reactor parts um, in here. Um, you can see various machines and stuff. We're going to be using this stuff um, to kind of finish out a lot of our quests, the majority of our quests within IC2 chapter, um, as well as setting up our reactor system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now the first thing I would like to do today is I'd like to go ahead and craft up our hazmat suit. Just to get it out of the way, we're going to be needing it. Um, so we might as well go ahead and knock this out. Um, and my crafting station. Um, let's go ahead and get this thing crafted up. Um, because I don't like to push anywhere near reactors without a hazmat suit because you will die. <laughs> Once you start getting into fuel rods and things like that, you will um, most assuredly die without a hazmat suit. I think it's there we go rubber boots and That's the full hazmat suit now one thing we should probably do um, Let's go ahead and get ourselves a Armor stand I want the Do we have bibliocraft? Yeah, we do Okay it seems like the armor stand has been disabled from Bibliocraft. I can't imagine why it would have been disabled, but the print, the printing press and the typesetting table are allowed. I don't understand. 
Um, well, anyways, let's just throw this on. I guess we'll just use a regular armor stand, but we're not going to have the quick swap, which is unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, we're going to rock our hazmat suit. Um, and this is just going to protect us from any kind of, like, uranium or plutonium, that kind of stuff. It's going to protect us from the radiation from that. Now, in addition, I did go ahead and mine up, and I did use some vein miner to mine this up because uranium is not overly common. It's not super rare, but it's not overly common, um, and I did need quite a bit of it. We're going to go ahead and get this running, and we're going to be running it through a macerator. Um, we've been running some through the ore doubling, the normal ore doubling system that we've got for the... Um, for this right here the immersive engineering uranium which does have its uses um, we can craft like mock cells with it and we can also craft like this to get the um, once we get some uranium 235 but truth be told we'll never use this method we might use this method I don't know we'll see um, but we will be using it later on for like reactor fuel rods and stuff like that so um, but most of our uranium moving forward will be ran through this system if we throw this in here, it's going to slowly, slowly start washing it. Technically, we could use it in this form. Um, you can see right here that we would get one small uranium-235 and some uranium-238 from that. But if we wash it first, um, we'll get a little bit of small lead byproduct. Um, and then we can get an, some additional 238 uh, from that. So, might as well go ahead and wash it first. Um, it's not that important because we're going to have way more um, 238 than we have 235. 235 tends to be what you're always running low on. Um, but we'll go ahead and get that stuff cleaned up and get this purified uranium. And what we can do then is we can centrifuge it. Now, it is going to require that we craft a centrifuge. And this is kind of where our first quest come into play. Um, I am going to go ahead and craft out an induction smelter. Actually, I guess it would be better if I placed it there. Um, let's go ahead and get ourselves... I think I have most everything, if not everything, in here that we're going to need um, for today's projects. So, let's go ahead and just get the induction furnace. I don't plan on really using this, but I just want to get the quest knocked out more than anything. Um, we talked about this, you know, a few episodes back. It is faster than the electric furnace initially, but the electric furnace can be faster long term, and I'm not really hurting for a furnace, truth be told, because I've got other uh, methods for smelting, so it's not that important to us uh, to go for that, to set that up. And then we're going to go ahead and get ourselves some mining lasers. And we're actually going to need three of these. If you look up the uses for them, we're going to use one for the centrifuge, but we're also later on we're going to use two for the pattern storage. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get ourselves three mining lasers. And you will notice that a lot of IC2 stuff can now stack. That didn't used to be the case, like overclocked heat vents. Like what? Um, but these are able to stack as long as our durability matches now, which is awesome. So we'll go ahead and throw our mining lasers in there. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves our centrifuge. There we go. And also there's a quest here for a kinetic generator. Let's go ahead and just knock that out just to get it out of the way. This is kind of like the induction furnace. I don't really have much in the way of plans for using it, at least not right now. But we'll go ahead and knock that quest out. Oh, and I actually forgot to craft our heat um, generator. Um, so let me get this whipped up real quick. Okay, there we go. Tons of micro crafting, so I knew I'd probably forget something somewhere along the line. Um, but there's our fluid heat generator. And so let's just set this up. This might end up being kind of a temporary placement. Um, and that's because I do plan on um, moving some of this stuff around. Um, basically for automation, really I guess I should set up the centrifuge over here. Uh, truth be told. So yeah, let's do... Let's see, the back side of this, this is the side, yeah, this is the side with the stairs, perfect. Yeah, let's just tear this off, because we're not going to be able to see back in there anyways. And we'll put our fluid heat generator there, and our centrifuge setting there. Um, now this will be a little bit manual at first, but 
And I dirt. I made a fluid heat generator and not a fluid heat exchanger. <laughs> I opened it up to put my coils in. And I was like, wait a second. This isn't right. Okay. One second. I don't think that's the first time I've done that. I'm not making steel right now. So, um, let me get this together real quick. I have to say, having the forestry work tables just makes life so much easier. It really does. So there's our liquid heat exchanger. That's what I actually want. So we'll just set this up. I'm like mega derping today. I need heat conductors, not coils. Ugh. It's been a long day. That's my excuse. We'll go ahead and throw that into there. Okay. Now this is only going to be a temporary solution. Um, so I'm not going to worry about automating the lava insert and the Paho lava extract. I'm not going to worry about that because this is only going to be temporary for running the centrifuge. After we run the centrifuge and we get this thing up and running, then we're not really going to use it anymore. So that will be fine. And actually, I just noticed, uh, I wondered if this wasn't kicking on all that much. The Paho lava, well, that one's not backed up. But a lot of these are backed up because of the Paho lava. So we are going to need to... Uh, deal with that so I'm just gonna set up our fluid trash can like right there and I'll have to make another one for the other side but we're gonna say that the insert on this is gonna be like you know negative 10 priority um, and that way it can just empty out that Paho lava but it's gonna prioritize sending it over to these magmatic dynamos uh, which should get that back up and running let me just go ahead and craft up another fluid trash can real fast and then I'll get this one placed over on this side. Um, and I'm assuming that priorities on these are set to zero. They are. Now I just need to grab some buckets of lava. So I'll do that. And we'll get this one going. Or at least uh, this put in there. And it's not really going to start eating this at the moment because the centrifuge isn't requesting anything um, but let me grab this stuff out of there we're going to throw in this purified uranium and get that centrifuging and then I'm going to need to run over some power for this also I'm going to have some cables over here and I'm going to run these because I already I'm going to need to run them I think two transformers should be fine on this um, so we'll go ahead and throw those in and basically we're going to run a power cable this connecting into this of course is temporary but it's going to need to be ran over this way for um, you know connecting into everything that's going to be over on this side so um, we're going to go ahead and just run this over to give the centrifuge a little bit of power so now we should see the centrifuge it's beginning to heat up at this point it's going to have to heat up to a specific temperature, um, possibly all the way. <laughs> um, it's going to have to heat up and then it's going to start breaking down that uranium. Um, let me see how this is going. Go ahead and grab that out, throw it in here. Um, it does take a little bit to heat up, but once it heats up, it's actually going to go pretty quickly. Okay, so that's going to start breaking that down. Now, really quickly, let's go ahead and just run through the quest that we've completed and get our loot boxes uh, for right now. So, there's that. And we do have a couple from the magic quests that we need to turn in. Uh, Thumbcraft, the golem press. It's basically just collect all this random junk and you get a loot chest. Um, we haven't actually started into golems, but we will later on. And then wooden spikes, we have a quest completed from that. All right, so let's go ahead and just pop these open. We got a drawer controller, not bad. Uh, we got a random animal spawn, uh, eight random animal spawn eggs. We got a canopy tree sapling. We got an observer, eight of them. We got redstone glass, a full stack, and we got rainbow oak sapling. While that's running, Let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and do a small side project that I want to do just really quick because there are quests for it and I'd like to go ahead and just do it to get it out of the way um, because we do need to get this thing set up anyways. 
let's go ahead and just make ourselves a CF foam sprayer, which is going to complete a quest. Let's go ahead, we'll turn that in. And we got an architect saw bench. Okay, I'll use that for sure. <laughs> Could never have too many of those things. And then inside of here, I do have an extra uh, canner. So let's go ahead and grab that along with just a couple transformer upgrades. And we're gonna set this canner up right here, right next to the infinite water source, which is gonna fill it. And then let's go ahead and throw those transformer upgrades in there and just run power up to that. And then we're gonna set this to uh, enrich liquid. And then if we take this right here, CF powder, um, and this is crafted with just stone dust, clay, and sand. Um, if we throw this into here and let this start running, it's gonna craft a CF, uh, like the CF powder liquid. And we'll just let that fill up for right now. Um, and then, let's see, how's this doing? This thing's so slow, but we will make it faster down the road. But right now, it's gonna be slow, that's okay. I'll go ahead and keep that running. How are we doing on lava? We are doing great. We've created one Bajo lava so far. And these are about kicking away again, which is great because they were like, that was what, that I was wondering, I was like, man, I don't hear these kicking on. I didn't even like think about, I never set up the fluid trash can again, so. All right, so the next thing I wanna do, I wanna go ahead, let's finish up this side of things. Let's go ahead and get our nuclear reactors. Um, so if we pull this back up, we're going to go ahead and craft up these reactor chambers. Um, now we're going to get six that go around the reactor and then we're going to need to get two additional crafts. Um, and this is for this. Oh, I didn't make enough dense lead. Okay, I do have the lead. Thank goodness. And we'll just toss that in the compressor and we'll get some dense lead crafted up for us. And I think the very first reactor that we're going to set up is going to be the front center one, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll just take these reactor chambers and begin setting these up. So, oh wait, I can't though until I actually get the reactor proper placed. It has to go down first, so. Now this is the point in which we could potentially die. Um, because if we're holding that, you can see I start taking damage uh, from that uranium. And I get this radiation sickness debuff. And it does, it will stack, or at least it normally does stack, um, to where you can have radiation for like five minutes and it's awful. Absolutely awful. It will kill you most of the time. Um, unless you have milk or something like that. Okay, so there's our nuclear reactor. And we do have one extra reactor chamber because they, they craft two at a time, so. But there we go, quest complete. We got our nuclear reactor. And we're gonna set this guy up right there. And if you're not familiar with this, um, basically if we open it up, you can see three lines of six slots and then all these X'd out slots. Um, the X'd out slots are opened when you add reactor chambers. For each reactor chamber, it opens up one line, um, and you have to basically surround your nuclear reactor with reactor chambers. So you can see after adding three, we have three additional uh, slots that have been added. But most of the time, most builds, you're just gonna fully surround it. There are like early game starter type builds, um, but at the end of the day, it's really just a lot of like copper tin, um, iron, that kind of stuff. So it's really just a process of mining a lot to make one of these like full sized. So I tend to just go for the full sized uh, reactors. So there we go. Our very first reactor is in place now. Um, and we did complete a quest and that finishes up. I mean, there is the quest here for plutonium and RTG fuel. We're gonna get to that, but we have to run the reactor for a while before we can possibly make it. Um, so let's go ahead. We got an energy acceptor. Yeah, so now, now that we've got that in place, I guess, I guess we'd go ahead and set up the reactor. There's a lot of different designs. 
I do suggest if you're doing a new reactor design that you test it in a test world because um, of course if you set it up wrong this can explode <laughs> basically you have um, you'll have a core temperature normally but it's all bugged out here um, I need to try and see about updating the pack I didn't update for a while because um, with that TC add-on being removed I think it was in this pack and I was like uh, I don't know if it's safe to update but a new update version has came out since then um, and so I do want to update and see if maybe this gets fixed or not but um, I'm going to do the same, this is actually the same reactor design that we did the last time around in Enigmatica. I love this design, it works, and it produces 420 EU per tick, I like that. Core temperature, it's completely stable, it doesn't have to be toggled on and off, which is great. Um, and it's just an overall, it's a good design. And so we're going to be going with that, and basically what we're going to be needing is one of these component heat exchangers. We're going to need 11 component heat vents, 7 IC2 platings, um, just the standard platings, and then we're going to need 28 overclocked heat vents for this. Um, and so if you're wanting to follow along, I'm going to take it kind of slow, but whenever you set these up, make sure double, triple, quadruple check your component layout. Make sure that everything's good before you turn this on and monitor it to make sure your core temperature is not going up because if it does go up then you know that something's set up wrong but if you look right down here there is a ton of different components if you want to know what each one does you can check the IC2 wiki it does detail what each of these do um, but basically the goal is to set up your fuel rods and to make sure that the heat um, it's not building up a core temperature on your nuclear reactor you want the heat to be kind of dispersed and then kind of ejected out of the reactor um, because if that core temp starts going up it starts devouring your components and it'll start eating it'll start eating these components you don't want the durability on any of these to go down right because it's going to get destroyed and once your core temperature goes up to like 100 percent it's going to explode and when these things explode it's like a nuclear bomb going off it will wipe out a fairly large section of your base and that's why I've set up this. This is just reinforced stone. I've done a full solid like casing that surrounds it, including corners um, and edges and stuff like that. It's completely solid surrounding this because if this does explode, a single layer isn't going to stop the full explosion, I don't believe. I know it doesn't with MOX fuel, um, but it's kind of a safety precaution. If it explodes, um, it'll be a lot less devastating, but it shouldn't explode. Um, I've used this setup for the reactor many, many times before, and it's always done very, very good by me. And so I tend to, um, I tend to like going with this one. But let's go ahead and finish setting this up. So we've got our platings laid out, um, and if you need to pause the video as we go through this, feel free. Um, but this this uh, reactor can be found online as well. It's actually a very common. Uh, reactor design so you can just about google nuclear reactors and you're going to see this one um, and this one uses seven quad uranium fuel rods uh, for the setup i don't know who originally created this setup i have no clue um, you know it's one of those things that's been passed around online so many times um, so i don't really know who to give credit to but let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and throw in our component heat exchanger it goes right here um, and then we're going to lay out these uh, overclocked heat vents and these are the majority of what we're setting up um, they're not overly expensive you can see they're going to take some gold they're going to take a bit of copper they're going to take iron plates and the electric motors and iron bars um, Luckily, Forestry Worktable makes those electric motors way easier. So I do highly, highly suggest it. And the slots that I'm leaving open are going to be our quad fuel rods. There we go. That's the reactor design. And you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven open slots. That's where our quad fuel rods go. Now let me double check, make sure that everything is just as intended. Yeah, everything looks good. 
So now what we're going to do, we need to make our quad fuel rods. And I want these right here, these quad uranium fuel rods. And we're gonna need to make ourselves some of this nuclear uranium. Now this can be made either through the normal fluid solid canning machine or just the solid canner. And I did go ahead and make just a solid canner right here because I figure we'll use this for uh, canning our uranium. Um, this isn't the next step, but we'll go ahead and get this thing set up um, and in place so that we have it. Um, we'll go ahead and put it in right there. Um, and this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and get the last bit of this uranium being ran. We've actually got a fair amount of uranium, so, but we are going to be using a lot of it, so. Um, and so what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to craft up um, 28 nuclear uranium, um, and that is uranium-235 and uranium-238. Once again, make sure that you're wearing your hazmat suit for this part. And you can see I'm waiting on a small uranium-235 right now. Unfortunately, you're always going to be running low on that stuff. Oh, God. I'm not going to have enough. I'm going to have to go mining even steel. Okay. Let me go down to the mines. Let me go get some more uranium. Okay, I got nine more uranium, which will be enough. So we'll go ahead and get that running. Now, in addition, we are going to need to get ourselves uh, some of these crafting fuel rods. These are made with just iron plates. So we'll go ahead and dump these into the metal former and get that running. And then we're going to need uh, iron plates and copper plates. I'm going to go ahead and get those running. And then we'll be pretty much ready. We'll just be waiting. My machines aren't super fast at the moment. Once we get this up and running, um, we'll start adding some speed upgrades into things um, because we'll be closer to being able to support faster machines, you know. Um, once we get our four reactors set up, then we'll really be in a good spot um, to run things very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get 12 of this nuclear uranium um, because we can go ahead and run this. Um, but let's go ahead. We're going to drop that and that into the canner and get this running. It's going to start canning this together and making um, single fuel rods for us. And of course we need four per for these quad cells. By the way, we will get back to construction foam. It might be next episode. Um, once we get all of our cables ran and stuff like that, then we'll start foaming everything and doing facades so we can clean up um, all of this area. But I just wanted to point that out that we are going to come back to that. And there's a reason for that. But um, our uranium fuel rods are done. Let's go ahead and snag those. And then what we're going to do is just craft these up, get our seven quad uranium fuel rods. And there we go. It was like bugged. Um, we're going to drop these in to here. So that's the finished reactor layout. Now what we need to do is we need to get ourselves a lever. And just bear in mind, it's not going to be a lever long term, but for the short, short term, we're going to have a lever on it. Um, that's really just so that we can run it, test it, see it run. Um, and then next episode, we'll be kind of finalizing um, everything for this. Usually setting up our reactors and doing our mass fabs and stuff. It's a couple episodes. Um, so this episode will get it set up and then next episode we'll get all the cabling and all the intricacies ran so that we can start running the recycler and the mass fab and basically having it say like okay run make power okay i've got enough power now send power to recyclers and start making you you matter stuff like that so um and this is completely finished you can see that we got a lot of 238 uranium and we have just a small amount left over of 235. Not very much. All right, so let's grab ourselves a couple MFSUs and our glass cable. And we're going to run the power from this out the bottom, I believe. So we're going to be coming in four blocks. So there's our reactor. We're going to go ahead and just plug in 
to it right there. Now later on we are going to have to run item cables and stuff for automation, um, automatic extraction, insert, but we'll handle that then. Um, and now as far as the MFSUs that are coming from this, I'd like to set them up. Yeah, this is perfect because this we don't need. We're going to put our MFSUs here and here. And that way if we come over we can see them sitting here and we can see how much power is in them. But the cabling will all be behind those. And then what we're going to do, this will be the output side of course. Um, and then we're going to input power on this side. So we'll just run that down over to here. Okay, now that's in place. We should be able at this point to toggle this on and see what happens. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead. You hear it start kind of sizzling almost and you'll see the components, their durability drop and then come back up. Um, and that's just, you're going to get some durability hits, but you'll notice that the durability goes back up. It's not like armor or something like that that you have to repair. It kind of goes down and goes back up. Now the uranium fuel cells these will not get their durability back, of course. They have 20,000 durability. Once that 20,000 is depleted, which all these will deplete at the same time, once that durability is depleted, the fuel rod is um, basically depleted. It's going to become like this, and then we can process this down and get um, some uranium-238, some iron, but most importantly, we're going to be able to get small plutonium from this. Now, if we take a look over here, you can see that we're building up uh, power in both of these. So the reactor running is sending that power over um, to our MFSUs. So you can see this one is just about to finish out. It's been running smoothly, um, no issues while I was editing footage. And now it's going to start dumping all of its power into this one. So it is going to generate power in this a bit faster. Um, I'm going to turn it off in just a minute. Um, because I don't need to run it until I get the recyclers and everything set up. I really don't need to run it um, anymore. I was really just testing it, but uh, everything is good. Everything's running smoothly. You can see we're down to um, just about 18,000 durability on our uh, uranium fuel rod. So it's going to have filled up basically two MFSUs for 2,000 durability. It won't quite fill up um, two with, you know, 2,000, but it's going to be decently close. Okay, I stopped it right there. So we've got 18,000 out of 20,000 durability on all of these. Of course, bear in mind it's 2,000 durability for each of these fuel rods. But we got almost 70 million RF from that. So not too bad. Um, now next episode, I know it's getting pretty close to wrapping up point, but next episode we are going to be we're going to be setting up basically the cabling for all of this so that it runs intelligently on its own as well as setting up recyclers, scanners, fabricators, all that stuff. We're going to be setting all of that up. Um, let's go ahead just so we can knock these quests out this episode and so we can pretty much just focus on setting everything up next episode. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a recyclers, but we do have to make scrap, so I'm not going to worry about it then. We'll just knock them out next episode. But yeah, next episode we'll set up the cables and probably... The goal is next episode we're going to finish out all the remaining quests within IC2 because this is all basically one chain reaction. Um, I will let this run next episode long enough to get ourselves RTG fuel. But yeah, so we'll do that. That's all fairly easy and pretty straightforward. We're going to move pretty quickly through that and we're going to set up all the cabling and redstone um, so that this turns on and off on its own. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, after next episode, we will be moving on to something else because we'll pretty much be done with IC2 other than just expanding at that point um, and little odds and ends sorts of things that we'll do um, with IC2 in future episodes. But uh, we'll be done with the core of IC2, which also means that we'll have plenty of power, which we're going to be converting to RF um, to kind of give us a jump start on the RF based mods because of course I have been struggling with power over in the farms because it is a fairly large scale farm so I do want to get this in place and then um, probably do a bit more farm expansion work uh, at some point after that 
because then we'll have more power going in there, right? So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.